Welcome to Introduction to Project Management, Managing Project Risk. This is Lecture B. The objectives for managing project risk are to assess project risks, plan project responses, prepare and maintain a risk register, develop and execute a risk management plan. The Work Breakdown Structure, or WBS, details activity lists that will help you identify project risks. You will develop these lists from your requirement analysis and scope statement, so if you have planned your project effectively, creating the lists should be relatively simple. As you can see on this diagram, the WBS essentially breaks the scope of your project into manageable chunks of work that are approximately 80 hours or less. The lowest level in your WBS is the work package level. These work packages are broken down even further to create lists of activities. You will be able to identify many project risks simply by examining these work packages and activity lists to uncover areas of uncertainty. As an example, an activity list may indicate that a specific software package will be integrated into the evolving system. What is the risk of using that software in the intended way? Is this a mature product? Is there a large installed base of users? Is the product being used in ways that are similar to how it will be used on your project? Have you heard that the vendor will be acquired by a larger company? And if so, how will that affect your project? If the new company continues to offer this product, will they offer it in the form that you want to use? These are just a few of the kinds of questions you can raise while reviewing activity lists. The situation can get even more complicated when you consider the environment in which this risk occurs. Let's consider the level of risk with an immature software application in this fairly new specialization of IT. Provider-based IT solutions are only about 10 years old, so the maturity level of many health IT applications is not that extensive. So we need to put that maturity into context. Is the company so new to the market that the demands of a large institution could swamp it? Or is this company entering a new part of the market? How long have they been in the health IT business? And how long have they worked in this particular area of health IT? Do they have the necessary expertise to step up to the challenges, for example, of a large installation? Do they have the capital to invest in this new area and develop the expertise? These are examples of the kinds of questions that might help you assess the risk in a health IT project. You will document and track your identified risks in a risk register. Some of the categories in a typical risk register might include those listed here, such as description, category, trigger, consequence, and probability. A key category is the risk owner. This is the person assigned to monitor that particular risk and implement the risk response strategy. This example shows some typical entries that you would find in a risk register. You may not be able to complete all of the columns at first. For example, you may have several possible responses to a specific risk, so you might list these in that column for a time. As you continue to analyze the risk, some options will be eliminated, and you will eventually zero in on the best strategy. The risk register becomes a place for you to keep track of and update information as it becomes available. This example shows preliminary assignment values for probability and impact. Notice the way that probability and impact are identified here. They are assessed as high, medium, or low. You will use these rankings later in your analyses. Let's review more information about qualitative and quantitative risk analyses. The qualitative analysis uses a high-level subjective approach. It triages the risks by assessing the probability occurrence and the impact, which are often expressed with ordinal rankings like high, medium, or low. You can also assign a score of, say, 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 to better pinpoint the relative probability or relative impact of the risk. Once you've organized the list by scoring or ranking, you know which high-priority risks to move forward into quantitative analysis. That type of analysis assigns numerical values for the probability and impact for each potential risk event. 
This slide shows a probability matrix for a qualitative analysis and provides a way to understand how impact and probability relate to each other. The risks here have been ranked in terms of low, medium, and high for both probability on the left vertical axis and impact on the top horizontal axis. Based on how the probability ranking and the impact ranking intersect along the matrix, you would assign the risk with the letters A, B, C, or D in order of priority. As you can see here, two high rankings result in an A priority rank, or the highest priority, while a high ranking and a medium ranking result in a B priority rank, which is not as severe. This example is taken from Tom Peltier's book, Information Security Analysis, but it is representative of other generic probability matrices that present a system for assessing and prioritizing risk in a methodical manner. When doing this analysis in a health IT setting, consider the risk in terms of harm to the patient. For instance, providers who are slow to adopt new technologies may actually cause risk to the patient by, say, missing a drug interaction or performing incorrect lab procedures. Quantitative analysis of risks must be conducted carefully. Values for probability and impact of risks must be based on solid information. In some cases, you may have relevant historical data that can provide a good idea of the probability of occurrence. For example, if there is a history of power failures in your region and loss of power has been identified as a risk, then you can uncover data to help assess the probability of that risk occurring in the future. In cases of the successful integration of a new technology, your values may be based on the considered judgment of experts. So be aware of your confidence level in the values you use. Be cautious of making important decisions about risk priorities when you lack confidence in the supporting data. After you have analyzed and prioritized your project risk, the next step is to consider your risk response strategies. Again, your goal is to encourage positive risks and reduce negative risks to a level that still allows the project to achieve its objectives. Even if the risk you are facing is a positive one, you still need to manage it to the project's advantage. In this case, your strategies are to share, exploit, enhance, or accept the risk. If you are facing a negative risk, your strategies include avoid, transfer, mitigate, or accept the risk. Notice that acceptance is a risk strategy associated with both threats and opportunities. We'll delve into these strategies on the following slides. Now we'll discuss strategies for positive risks in greater detail. Risk sharing is when you partner with others, such as another company or team, to take advantage of an opportunity for the benefit of the project. You often use risk sharing when you need more resources than you have available to respond to the opportunity. Risk exploitation is doing everything you can to take advantage of this opportunity while making sure that the positive risk is realized in your project. Risk enhancement involves plans to increase the likelihood of the positive risk event occurring. In the risk acceptance strategy, the team doesn't actively pursue opportunities or make plans to deal with them, but it does take advantage if the risk occurs. This approach is usually implemented if the opportunity is small or low priority. There are also four strategies for managing negative risk. Risk avoidance requires the project team to change the project management plan to eliminate the risk or protect the project objectives from its impact. With risk acceptance, however, the project team chooses to not bond to the risk threat and does not change the project management plan. Small or low priority risks are typically accepted. Risk transference involves shifting the impact and responsibility for the risk response to a third party. Insurance is a good implementation of this strategy. If the risk involves possible liabilities, payments, or risks, you may be able to obtain insurance to avoid losses or reduce their impact, or you may be able to secure guarantees in contracts and warranties. Sometimes your approach may be to mitigate or lessen the risk. In risk mitigation activities, you try to reduce the probability of the event's occurrence or reduce its impact if it does occur. 
The Monitor and Control Risks process implements the response plans and evaluates the effectiveness of these actions while still scanning the environment for new risks. The project manager should conduct periodic staff meetings to track current risks, identify new risks, and review risk audit results. Can current risks be reassessed? Are they still as high of a priority as they were before? As a project manager, you may want to keep and maintain something like a top 10 risk list so you are constantly aware of the top risks and their status at any time. The project manager will update all project documents, including the risk register, to reflect the outcomes of risk responses. It is important to build flexibility into your plans and budget. Some life cycle models can adapt better to uncertainty than others. These adaptive, iterative, and agile models feature short cycles, so you can respond to events and conditions as they occur. It will give you a chance to map out effective next steps that make sense in the real-time context of your project. Keep contingency plans for the obstacles you might run into during your project. Continually ask yourself what-if kinds of questions. What if our top systems people may leave the project? What if a vendor does not come through for you? Document your response plan in concrete detail. For instance, rather than noting that you will build financial reserves if the budget is slashed, identify some contingency funds that could be tapped. This concludes Lecture B of Managing Project Risk. In summary, remember that risk identification and management are critical processes throughout your project, not just at the beginning. Your goal is always to minimize or eliminate negative risks while encouraging positive risks, also known as opportunities. Develop a comprehensive and effective risk management plan, as well as a register to track your risk responses to various risks. Analyze each risk in terms of its probability and outcome, and use your findings to prioritize your risk register. Your effectiveness in managing risk can go a long way to ensuring a successful project.